It's 5 o'clock, and it is Tuesday, March 19th for the Middlesex Select Board meeting um, at Middlesex Town Hall. And the first thing is a call to order. Um, are there any amendments, Sarah? Uh, so I just want to direct your attention to the, everything that's highlighted on your agenda. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, right, to uh, reappoint the town positions, deputy health officer that has a time constraint, so that's it. Um, I, uh, last year you guys reviewed and adopted the rules of procedure, but when I checked with uh, VLCT, it's something that you can do every year since uh, you have new board members, so I included that. Um, you've received the uh, Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Grant of $9,862. $9, that needs a signature so that we can get money for hazard mitigation uh, plan uh, consultant. Um, and then there is the bond bank resolution. We had it on the on the on the agenda, but we got all the paperwork today, so uh, that you guys can, since you're all here, the lawyer rushed it, so you can sign it. It's not due till March 28th, but might as get it done. We have an access permit for Diana and Luther Putnam on South Bear Swamp Road, and Liz asked me to add a survey from the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources. So that's it. Everything. Great. Great. Any other amendments? Alrighty, and we have guests as well. We have some on Zoom, and Zara is joining us from Zoom. She is our board member, our newest board member. Welcome, Zara. Um, we Thank have you. I will be back the next one. Great. We have Zach Smith, and we have Cindy Griffith, and is there someone behind the participants? Named someone named John. Okay. Evelyn and Zach. Evelyn and Zach. Okay, welcome. Steve Dennis. Hi. 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 Hi there. Hi. And Steve. And Steve Dennis. Okay. And then in the audience here, we have some guests as well. You must be Richard. Is that Richard Cowles? Yep. Thank you. Welcome. And you are Jody. Jody Dwyer. And Matt Dwyer. And, and thank you, Shelly. Alrighty. Thank you all for coming. Um, so we are going to continue. We started at our last meeting um, where we designated a chair and a vice chair and a few other things. Um, so we're continuing the organizational meeting, which is what we do after the start, after the um, town meeting day. We always do every year um, a reorganization meeting of the positions that get reappointed like chair and vice chair and all that. Um, and so the, one of the things that we do is we designate a newspaper of record. Is there a nomination for a newspaper of record? Sure. Uh, I think we've used the Times Argus in the past. Okay. I will nominate Times Argus. Okay. Is there, there's a second for the Times Argus. Any other nominations for a newspaper of record? Who, who, who Randy um, moved it and Vic seconded it. The Times Argus. All right. All those in favor of the Times Argus say aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations, Times Argus. Um, we have the appointment of the road commissioner. Um, so this past weekend, um, I received an email from Mr. Cowles here who expressed an interest um, in uh, serving as the road commissioner. Currently, we have Vic Dwyer as our road commissioner. And this is a position that um, we as a board um, towns can either choose to have a road commissioner voted upon or um, assigned by um, the select board. Um, so our town does the select board. Um, and, uh, and so we sent to Mr. Cowles a job description <laughs> of what a road commission, yeah, what, what a road commissioner is responsible for. Um, and so I invited him to share his experience and his interest in being a road commissioner and then find out also if Vic, you are still interested in being the road commissioner as well. And then we would decide who would be the road commissioner. So Mr. Cowles, if you would like to introduce yourself, give us this, your experience. Richard Coles. Uh, Coles, sorry. Yes. Well, I've been a resident here for uh, 25 plus, 30 years. Um, my family's been here probably 100 years. And uh, anyways, um, you know, kind of read your 
the French Point Forum, and I've seen in the past where, you know, it seemed like there was a, some concern needing some help, you know. And we read that, and of course we've had some pretty tough, pretty tough uh, storms come through. And as, as in my world, I've been doing excavation and uh, um, construction for as 25 years, and uh, plus, mo most of my whole life, my whole family has done it. And uh, so I thought that, you know, maybe I could help. Um, you know, I realize this is not really a paid position. You know, there's, you know, it's, it's more or less helping the town or in, in whatever way possible. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what you really want me to say as far as my job experiences or, or, or what I've done in my life. Um, I mean, I, I've been a manager for 50, 60 people at different companies. Um, I manage my, my other company that I had for, uh, you know, 15 employees. You know, I've dealt with the workers' comp, the, all the safety regulations and all that aspect of it, um, the, the finances purchases and sale of equipment um, and uh, and I, I think I have a, some knowledge a lot to offer um, I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room that have a lot to offer in that department too and it takes money you can't do anything without money um, so I thought I'd throw my hat in the you know, in the, in the pool and see, you know, if I could help now, whether it's a road commissioner job or, or at all. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've seen the roads from one, one realm to the other. I, to be honest, I think I've seen East Hill worse and that's where I live out on East Hill. Um, I think there's a, I think there's a point where, where we have to start somewheres and, and start maybe we don't necessarily need to pave the road but we need to bring them to a grade where they you know to that level um and uh i, I think that uh, there was some questions i read in the front porch forum that uh, uh that there was questions of, of of we weren't sure if we were getting built twice and yeah, um, or, or if we were on our accounts and, and stuff like that. And I had some work with, I'd work with FEMA as well um, during the storms, uh, other towns and uh, uh, worked close with Richmond. And, you know, it, all, it always was documentation. You know, they, they were hiring me to do certain works to repair, repair the roads and stuff, you know. And it, it's, it's paperwork, it's, it, it is documentation and, and it is making sure the people working for you uh, do a certain what's expected, you know, as far as because you don't know. Um, but there, there's a lot of things. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. As far as uh, as far as my life goes, I mean, I, I have a commercial Class A driver's license. Uh, I, I can. I've had a fleet of 10, 15 trucks. I've hauled fuel out of Montreal for 10, 15 years. A tractor trailer. I, I was subbed out for uh, like Suburban and, Al and Pyrofax and Ultramar. Um, so as far as the mechanics and the ability to do a job like Eric here, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm familiar with what he's doing, you know. Um, and, but I, I, just, I just thought I'd offer my help, you know. I, I, I go home, I, I build roads, and, and, and they, they can last a lifetime. But, you know, you got to pay for it, and I, and I don't want my taxes to go up either. You know, like anybody else, but it costs money. Right. And okay. in, and I think we're starting Great. in some places. You know. Well, it's always really nice when people from the community step up to offer their services um, because you're right; it is an unpaid job. I mean, I think there's a tiny stipend, but it's you know really more of a service to the town. The way the select board is sort of a service to the town as well. Um, do, is there anyone here who has questions specifically um, for Richard um, about his experience? Yes, Randy? Um, so you, you said, you know, that you've been in the excavation world. Uh, I'd like to know, and you mentioned briefly, you know, building roads, but, you know, um, I guess I'm looking for you to elaborate on your experience with roadways and, and so I can, so the board can get a sense as to whether or not you've been digging foundation holes 
for the 25 years that you've been in excavation or working in roadways specifically um, for the 25 years? I just want to understand like a little bit more of the background. Okay. Well, you know, uh, I've worked for uh, several companies as far as like with Jay McDonald. Um, we we st started with uh, uh, down there at the, at the the hospital and uh, build the, the the parking garage and and those infrastructure things. Um, as far as I've, I've been on, um, yeah, I've probably done hundreds of cellar holes. It's kind of boring. I've done so many of them. Um, it doesn't change much. Um, and as, as far as roads, yes, I've done uh, development in, um, in uh, Richmond, uh, Greystone Estates. Uh, it was built to town specifications with 24 foot wide roads, with uh, two feet of shoulder on each side, you know, guardrails, the whole deal. Um, town had to take it over. Um, you know, it, it's, it does take money, and, and, uh, and it takes the, the material that has to be state spec, you know, in order to last a lifetime. Um, let's see, you know, we, I was working on a, I mean, I was a trucker. I had done a lot of work with, uh, up at, uh, on the, on Route 2 in, um, in, um, project that Jay McDonald did up there. I can't remember exactly, just beyond Northfield there. Um, so I've had a lot of exposure to, to how those are put together, um, and also as well, uh, yeah, hundreds of driveways. Uh, as far as I'm building a road right now through the finishing graystone right now um, in Richmond, and you know a lot of blasting involved. Uh, I've I've worked with blasting companies, uh, uh, and as far as um, and I, I I do my own rock crushing. I have my own rock crushing business. I ran several gravel pits. Um, in, uh, in the Jericho department, Jericho area, and also uh, Bolton. Um, I still do rock crushing, but I, it takes people. I don't, have, I don't have any employees anymore. I just stick to myself, uh, myself. And uh, so as far as the knowledge of, of all, just about all aspects of, of gravel material. Okay. I mean, if you, wanna, if you want me to ask you how to fill the road, you know, I can explain to you how I would build a road, you know, but I think everyone here probably knows how to build a road. Um, and, and, you know, it, uh, you know, I've worked on, you know, a lot of things in Essex, uh, the, the, the days in, uh, extended suites in Essex, uh, on Kellogg Road, um, Okay, th thank you. Zara here has a question for you. Yes, Zara. Uh, a, a question for both Richard and then Vic. Um, just what 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 is your suggestion for the best way to deal with our roads right now? What would you suggest? I guess first Richard and then Vic. Uh, Vic. Um, well, right now Middlesex gets like a month of winter longer than anybody else. There's two weeks earlier. There's two weeks later. So we're still thawing out. Um, there's not much we can do with mud. And, and, and so yes, you, we can, and then what we've been doing is, what we can do is we can throw rock down, we can get our pass, we can get through here and, and get until it gets drier. Um, and it's, but right now, I was looking at the, the how much material we buy, um, and it wasn't really, it didn't seem like a lot. And we're not, I think we're not even touching the, even getting close to what, what we would need to do. Um, it's, if I was gonna do something, I would start off stretch. I would just start out there and we'd dig it down two to three feet, find hard, hard pan, and we'd throw the dense grade in the bottom. We'd build it up to where it had to be. And then we would top it off with some uh, inch and a half or three quarter inch plant mix, you know, and then uh, with the fabric and all the material, we do the ditches, we put the culverts in where they need to be. You know, I mean, that's, that's road building, yeah. you know, we're, we're, you know, we're patching right now, right. Yeah. you know. Okay, in the interest of getting through our agenda, um, because we have a huge thing to cover, I'll let you uh, finish there. And then Vic, if you want to answer Zara's question, where she said, if you were, oh, what would, what would be your, what was your question? Like, what is your? 
plan to help fix the roads? Yeah. What, where, where do you stand on what's your plan? Well, there's no quick and easy uh, way to fix uh, Middlesex roads because we've uh, been doing, uh, we've been uh, dealing with this for uh, years and years and years. And, and uh, um, I think that uh, what Eric has done uh, uh, this this uh, particular year is uh, about all anybody can do. Now, I realize that sometimes, uh, some couple weeks ago, it was very, very muddy, and that freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw, is uh, not much you can do to repair that. Yes, uh, if we had the money and uh, the crew, uh, like I said at town meeting, uh, we could go back and, uh, you know, uh, excavate and uh, put in good material like was done previously, but as we said, uh, with this particular uh, crew that we have in the uh, um, uh, we we suffered when we did their construction we suffered in maintenance and it put us along put us way back in maintenance so um, people are getting together the planning commission uh, Sandy uh, has uh, I've been to a few uh, 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 Planning Commission meetings, been talking with uh, with Sandy, and uh, I think it's going to be a, a, a group effort to see uh, how much money we can get, uh, how many grants we can get uh, to uh, to do uh, 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 a better mitigation on uh, quote unquote mitigation on mud. Uh, the idea is not to have to mitigate mud every year; it's to you know, to get to a point where you can put the gravel on during your, in, in, the, in the summer and it doesn't uh, sink out of sight. Um, I'll also remind us that at 6 o'clock we have on the agenda considering creating a mud road subcommittee. Correct. Uh, that would research the cost of road repairs, potential grant funding, paving costs, etc. Um, and that sort of come out of some of these front porch forum conversations and, and Sandy. Um, I think in the interest of time, um, I'll just make one comment, um, and that is, um, first of all, Vic, I need to ask you, are you interested in continuing your role as road commissioner? Yes, I am. Okay. So we have two, oh, um, and Stephen, yes, did you have, were you interested in also being road commissioner, Stephen? Uh, I was not, but I, okay. uh, uh, just to kind of piggyback on what Vic said about uh, this being kind of a group effort, I did just want to point out that the select board has the option to actually uh, nominate two road commissioners, not mm -hmm. just one. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. Um, and, um, and so I think um, one, one comment that I would like to make is that we're, uh, we are in sort of a two-year FEMA phase. We have just uh, finished sort of our first half of FEMA repairs and all the work that's been required of the um, paperwork that's been required of the work that has already been done. Um, and uh, Vic has been um, helpful in that sort of process of um, knowing what's going on with those, those FEMA impacted roads and also knowing what's going on with the future FEMA roads that, we're, that are going to need FEMA repairs. Um, so we have sort of phase two of, um, of, of this FEMA work. Um, and um, personally, I think it might make sense that if Vic still wants to be road commissioner, that, that he continues that work because he's very sort of tied to that work that's already being done. And he's very much aware of the future projects. That doesn't mean that, Richard, you couldn't be, come up to speed on that. But that would be a reason why I would say that um, you know it it might make more sense to have Vic continue. But this does go to a vote, and like Stephen said, we could potentially um, nominate up to two road commissioners. I'm not sure that that necessarily has. And please, you know, 
chime in here, but this is just my opinion, having two people overseeing Eric might be too much, right? Like Eric, um, Eric, you know, it just seems to me that I'm not sure that it's almost like a third wheel, right? And there could be butting of heads, and I just am not certain why two road commissioners would be of benefit to the town. Um, however, I would say anyone who's interested in the town roads, it would be super helpful and knowing that this is a position that you are interested in. And again, we have, this has to go to vote. I'm not sure that Vic should vote if he's running. So Sarah, right? He can't vote if he's running, right? Or can he? He can vote for himself? Yeah. Well, you can vote for yourself if you're on a ballot. Okay, yeah. All right. So yeah, I, I don't know. I just thought maybe there would be a conflict of interest because... Okay, um, so um, is there any other further conversation about this? I, the only comment I'll make is I agree with you. You know, Vic's been uh, in this position providing, you know, the support. Um, I think that that knowledge is, is important. Um, I, I also think that having additional uh, folks interested in being active, whether or not it's an official uh, road commissioner role, but maybe just somebody to help uh, continue to, you know, push those efforts along in whatever capacity is needed um, is always welcome in, in my mind. So, um, and if there is a subcommittee, um, I think that uh, having that group um, gives sort of credence to, you know, conversations with the school, with the select board. So like we now have a, I mean, we've always had a budget committee, but like there's, we sort of work in tandem, right? And so if there is a if there is a road subcommittee, that's something that isn't just necessarily, you know, calling up Vic or Eric and saying, hey, there's a problem with this. It's really, it, it's documenting, right? It's keeping a good record of what's going on and what may need to get done and where we as townspeople recognize that there are needs for our roads because we all know that there are a lot of needs for the roads but i also think that you know eric you are the person who works with the road commissioner so i just want to get your feedback on any, on any of this if you if you wish to i he's certainly been uh, very helpful with the fema work and and i think that's probably valuable going on forward as well Alrighty, are there any other questions or comments for Vic or Richard? Okay, is there a motion to appoint someone? I would nominate Vic for road okay. commissioner. Um, Randy has nominated Vic for road commissioner. Um, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Zara is seconding. Are there any other nominations? Okay, hearing none. Um, all those in favor of Vic Dwyer for road commissioner for the next year, say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cowles. I appreciate your reaching out, and I would welcome you to stay for the rest of the conversation because we will be talking more about roads and subcommittees, and it would be really valuable to have someone with your experience. I'm chatting with you. Yep. Okay. I, I would absolutely encourage you, you know, if we're putting together a committee to discuss roads with your interest here and and whatnot, I would encourage you to, to think about your participation there as well. Okay, good, great, thank you. Okay, um, so congratulations, Vic. Um, reappointments to the following town positions emergency management coordinator, um, that would be Steve Dennis. Steve, are you still with us? I am indeed. Okay, yeah. and you're still interested, correct? That is correct. Okay, great. So, um, do we have to we have to do these all separately, right, sir? Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's just yeah, let's just uh, let's do them all together. Um, fire warden, is that Jason? Jason Merrill. Okay. Jason. Oh, do we have to nominate? Do we have to say I nominate, Sarah? Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's just do that. Okay. All right, so who nominates um, Steve as emergency management coordinator? I okay. nominate Steve. Okay, Zara and um, Vic seconds. All those in favor of Steve, say aye. Aye. Thank aye. you, Steve. Congratulations. 
Okay, Fire Warden, is there a nomination? Nominate Jason Merrill. Okay, second? Second it. Okay, Vic is seconding Jason Merrill. All those in favor of Fire Warden Jason Merrill, say aye. 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 Uh, Tree Warden, who is that? Gary Lamell. Oh, Gary Lamell, okay. Uh, who's nominating Gary? Uh, can we hold Can we hold off for one second? Yeah. Have, have you been reached out to by I any of these candidates that said that do not want to be? I have reached out. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so who is nominating Gary Lamell for Tree Warden? All right. All right, Vic is nominated. Are there any seconds? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Randy has seconded the Tree Warden. All those in favor of Gary Lamell as Tree Warden, say aye. 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 Okay, congratulations, Gary. Okay, Wrightsville Beach Management Representative. Well, we have a change. Oh. Well, George is no longer interested, and Eric Brown is. Okay. That he would, that he and his family, uh, my family and I live on Wood Road, and we frequently rec recreate at the reservoir. But there's more to the reservoir. Since we moved here from Berlin in 2018, we found it to be a special place for swimming, hiking, blah blah blah. Awesome. Okay, so please let me know. In his beautiful town, he would love to be on the board. Oh, wonderful. Eric Brown. A R I C. Yeah. Okay, so Vic has nominated him. Any seconds for Eric Brown? Okay. Um, second. Zara is seconding. All those in favor of Eric Brown as a Wrightsville Beach Management Representative. Aye. Congratulations, Aye. Eric. Aye. Okay, the Recreation Director, is that Mitch, Mitch still? Mitch Ozeki. Okay. So we have a nomination of Mitch Ozeki from um, Randy. Is there a second? I second it. Vic is seconding it. All those in favor of Mitch for um, Recreation Director, say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. Um, E911 Coordinator. That's Oh, okay. Um, Zara, would you like to nominate Mitch for that? I nominate Mitch for that. All righty. Is there a second? <laughs> okay. Uh, Vic has seconded it. All those in favor of Mitch is the E91 coordinator. 911. Aye. Aye. Okay. It, ooh, here's a, here's a good one. Animal control officer. Yes. Okay, we got to change. All right. All right. Out. Christina Hayward has agreed, Yay. Uh, and she has a lot of experience. And she is Erica. Erica recommends her highly. That would be the yes. Best. Me too. She works at Guy's Farm and Yard. And I'm I'm assuming she's the only one that's reached out. Funny enough, she's the only one who wants to give dogs okay. in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> can, so you, strange. can you say her name again? Christina Hayward. H A Y W A R D. Yeah. Is there a no oh, Zara's nominating right? I nominate Christina Hayward. Hey, woo! All right, is there a second? All right, and Vic has seconded. All those in favor of Christina as our animal control, our ACO, say aye. 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 Yay, aye. Christina. Um, congratulations. And now our deputy health officer. Is that Dr.? No, nope. our deputy health officer is Liz Portman. Oh, Liz Portman, yeah. She has agreed, and she's even signed the oath. We have to get this to the state by March 31st. Okay. So that's one of the things. Yeah, I signed here. Yeah. Yep. You guys also skipped over. We haven't gotten there, I don't think. Yeah. Hold your horses. All right. Yep. Okay, so, um, all right, so we've gone through that. That's awesome. Wait, Great. I will nominate Liz Fortman. Oh, right, Liz Fortman. Right. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor of Liz Fortman. Aye. 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 Thank you, Liz, for your service. You that, okay? I did, yep. There it is, right, Randy? Yep. Okay, he sees it. <laughs> Reappointing David Lawrence as Middlesex representative to the CV Fiber Board with Bruce Stevenson as an alternate. And I just want to say, I have CV fiber. I am an early adopter. Love it. It's a little glitchy, but they said that's to be expected in the beginning. So what? thank you. Glitchy. glitchy. Well, because they're getting all middle sex wired up, and so they have to shut things down once in a while. Um, so is David Lawrence here, or has he nope, said? but they're fine. Okay, great. Is there a nomination? Nominate David Lawrence. Um, and Bruce is an alternate. Okay, is there a second? Yes, okay, Randy is seconding that. All those in favor of David and Bruce, say aye. 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 Okay. Reappointing Del McDonough as Middlesex's rep... I thought she lived in Worcester. Nope. Del McDonough as Middlesex's representative to the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District. Must be thinking of somebody else. Um, is there a nomination? I nominate. Okay. And is there a second for Del? I'll second her. I'll second. Okay. Or Zara. All those in favor of Dell? Say aye. Aye. 
Okay, yep. Reappointing Ronald Krauth as Middlesex's representative to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission with Mitch Osecki serving as alternate. Is there a nomination? Nominate. Okay, Zara first and Vic will be second. All those in favor of Ronald serving and Mitch as the alternate for the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission um, representative for Middlesex. Aye. Aye. Thank you for your service. <sighs> Reviewing and adopting the rules of procedure as an alternate to Robert's Rules of Orders 2024. Did everyone get a chance to read through these as a board member? Zara, did you? Basically, this is just sort of our rules of um, behaviors. Um, and uh, so there's a, there, there are pieces around organization, um, the agenda, around meetings and when those are going to happen, um, emergency meetings. We try to limit those, obviously, because we want to make sure that we can do a public announcement, but occasionally those happen. Um, and, um, and so all I would say is since this is my first year chairing, it's been a long time since we've had a different chair. We've had Peter Hood as our chair. And I would like to publicly acknowledge and thank Peter. He's not here. He was supposed to be here. But I'd like to thank him for his many years of service as our chair. Um, he has led us through a lot, including COVID and the flood. Um, and so I just would like to give him a round of applause. How about? <laughs> Yay, Peter. Um, and so uh, just to remember that um, obviously we want to make our select board meetings a welcome place for the public and that folks feel that they can speak um, and that everyone um, just treats everybody with respect because the reality is that we are all here. We are not here for the money, right? We are definitely not here for the money. Um, and we're not here because we don't want to spend time with our families and we don't want to be outside playing, right? We're doing this because we care about our town and, um, and we want what's best for our town and ourselves who live in this town. So um, I would say I invite members of the public to come. I think it makes for a much more um, interesting uh, meeting and it allows us to hear from, from you folks. So continue to come in person or you know via Zoom. Um, if you do want to speak, um, certainly just raise your hand, and I'll recognize you as the chair. And if you're talking, you're speaking to the chair as opposed to, like, you know, Matt talking to Eric, right, about something. Um, so that's how you try to keep the meeting civil is sort of just through, is, is through me. I mean, you don't, you know. Um, it happens that we start chatting, and that's okay. I'm not going to constantly stop people, but just, you know, in order to keep the peace and to keep movies, meetings moving, um, it's best to, um, to address the chair. Um, and, and again, feel free if I'm not seeing someone, nudge me. Say, Liz, so-and-so has their hand up, because I sometimes don't see, especially on the Zoom. Um, and uh, so anyway, so this is what we are um, adopting. Are there any questions about this? Uh, board members about the rules of procedure for the Middlesex Select Board? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to approve the rules of procedure? Alrighty, is there a second? Vic made the motion? A second. Okay, second. okay. Uh, Zara seconds. All those in favor of the rules of procedure, aye. say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. So, Zara, um, you're not here to sign it, but we do have a quorum to sign, so there you go. <sighs> 5.30, four minutes behind. Regular select board meeting. Oh, what was this? That was the organizational meeting. Wow. Okay, so we are approving the minutes. Welcome to the regular select board meeting. <laughs> We are now approving the minutes of the March 13th, 2024 emergency meeting, the February 29th, 2024 vicious dog hearing, and the February 20th, 2024 regular meeting, action likely. Was everybody, do we have a quorum for all these? I think we do for approving the minutes. Okay. Is there a motion to approve all those minutes all at once? 
Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay, Randy makes that motion. Is there a second? Vic. All right, so um, I'm not sure if you, Zara, Zara was not on the board, so Zara doesn't vote. Um, so all those in favor of approving the minutes of March 13th, February 29th, and February 20th, say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Okay, reviewing and possibly amending the agenda for the March 19th regular meeting action likely. Oh, I'm so confused right now. So you just have to say, you, you kind of addressed that at the very beginning. I did. Okay, good. So there's nothing, we've seen what's amended. This is our agenda, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll keep going then. Um, we do have to approve it. Oh, okay, so yeah. And is, I'll make that motion okay. to approve as amended. Okay, and your seconding, Vic seconding. All those in favor of the approved and amended agenda of March 19th, say aye. 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 Okay, aye. great. Approving signing a federal building resilient infrastructure and communities grant of $9,862.50 to pay for a consultant to update the town hazard mitigation plan action likely. And Sarah sent us that email with all those attachments. One was 200 and something pages long, Sarah, and I did not read that. That was the grant application, I think. Um, is there anything, Sarah, that you would like to tell us about this? Uh, just to recap, I'll just do this very quickly. It used to be back in the old days, the federal government or through the state would fund the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to, get, to do these, uh, to update, to get a, a consultant to uh, update our hazard mitigation plan every five years, and that was automatic. Sometime in the past four or five years that changed, and now the federal government releases the money through the state of Vermont to individual municipalities. Individual municipalities have to then go out, put out RFPs, and consultants apply. So this is the money to do that. And we're getting, we can't do anything until we get the money. We can't sit, sit on an RFP. So once we get this money approved, we can go put out an RFP. And uh, certainly Central Mott Regional Planning Commission will likely be one of the applicants. I thought it, they gave us a, a notice that we could go ahead without, I thought that was on the attachment, like that we were given permission before well, we got we the are. money. We weren't. We, we haven't been for the past two years. Oh, so I we, see. Now, okay. that we've, now, that this, now we can. And we have a 25% fee on that. We still pay 25% of it. Okay. That's ready. Uh, two questions. Is this the same uh, thing that uh, we got caught up in where they it was approved and they never sent money from last year? This is the this is where this money and this approval have been sitting in the coffers for 18 months. And we're just the federal government has just released it to the state of Vermont, and that's why it's dated November 22nd, yes. 2023. And I think the second part of my question is, uh, if the RFPs come back and, and they're significantly different than this money, can we go back and ask for more if we've got a 25% Honestly, um, don't match? Think so. It's, it's 13,000 is what they quoted as the like cost of this. We would pay 25% of that, and 9,000 is 75%. Right, but that's not through an RFP. That's just what they estimate, they estimate the cost it, yes. is going to be. It's they, the consultants understand yeah. how much we are we are budgeted for, so they, that's well known. It's a public record. They know how much money we have. But yeah, you'll be able to review. If we get more than one applicant, you'll be able to review as a select board and pick a consultant. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be my decision. That's your decision. Okay. So, um, is there a motion or any more further conversation about this? I just this? want to say that this is important because this is why we have to we have to fulfill five check five boxes in order to not have a twenty five percent match during a disaster. Yep. And if we don't have an updated hazard mitigation plan, we will have to chill out. We'll have to shell out twenty five percent if we have another match. Speaking of which, I did read the grant agreement, and part of it says that um, that we have to have a subcommittee. Like we have to have a committee yeah, of people. Yeah, in the past we have. Yeah. Okay. That I that been on. I probably have. Yeah. Um, that that are that that weigh in on this yep. plan. Yes, the consultant will go and present it to the subcommittee. The subcommittee will review and redraft, and they'll come to the select board. The select board will yeah. approve. It's up to the state. The state's approved, and then we're done. Okay. Okay, great. So if anyone's interested in being on the subcommittee for the hazardous mitigation plan, that's also an opportunity to serve the town. I think we've got uh, some people that could probably do that. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, any other questions or discussions about this? Are you okay with this? No, yep. Okay. So is there a motion? 
Yeah, I'll make the motion to sign to approve this. Okay. So, okay, and Vic seconds it. So, um, all those in favor of approving and signing the Federal Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Grant, uh, say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. And I think that is that grant here, Sarah. Yes, there. It's got all those little things. Okay. Yep. I'll. I'll look at that late. I'll look at that after the meeting. Um, okay, so we are right on schedule for the monthly meeting of the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department. Welcome. I'll do my best to get us back off schedule. Okay, thanks. Uh, so total we're up to is 19. We had uh, three calls this period. One of those was canceled by VSP up on the interstate. Thank goodness for VSP. Um, <clears throat> so we had max four and min three. For 3.7, it's a drop from last month, but considering we only had three calls, it's kind of uh, engine one went out once, six zero tanker one zero, and rescue out twice. So that the rescue was the winner this time. So we had the accident on 89; it was canceled. Nothing was found. Um, we had a vehicle fire on Route Two at in the Roots parking lot, oh. um, <clears throat> and then we had a tractor trailer unit with a load of salt roll over onto the railroad tracks. Uh, missed the delivery to Dubois by a little bit. But I went by there today and all that salt is gone. They came and cleaned it up. Um, so obviously two was shut down until they got the truck right it and out of there. Uh, as far as training, we went to Capital Dispatch to get a tour and to work with them on how best we can make the their lives easier and what they can do to make our lives easier on the radio. <clears throat> Good working relationship, seeing faces instead of just a voice on the radio. Um, repairs, we're still working on emission sensor. Um, it's been a, a real uh, bugger trying to figure it out. As far as purchases, after the last um, structure fire we had, uh, we decided we need to get a what's called a low-level strainer, which is a strainer you put into the the duck pond um, that it rides on the tanker, but it goes either on the side or behind the engine. So engine six has a rear draft capability, and we um, it has a five-inch hose off the back, and that's the, that's our primary um, our preferred engine to use in the pump roll because it does have that capability to draft from the pond in the back. So you're not tying up two lanes of traffic with the, the pond and so this low level strainer allows us to get way down in the, the level of water instead of just sticking, sticking a, a uh, five inch pipe in there and then now you you can get down to about two and a half inches of water versus about six. Um, so that's going to cost about uh, 672 bucks and uh, should be in here hopefully soon. As far as Fast Squad, we had a total of eight calls. Um, three of those were medical only. And now for the solar eclipse info. I went to a tabletop exercise last week. Um, as of last Tuesday, there were somewhere between 40 and 60,000 reservations in the Chittenden and Franklin County area, hotels, motels, Airbnbs, state campgrounds. Uh, they're going to open some of those up. Um, it is going to be, despite our um, best efforts to have a clear day, the, the reality is it could very well be cloudy. The odds are not to be sunny on that day, but whatever. Why? They still get dark. How do we know that? Uh, back the t last 10 years, only been two days it's been sunny on that well, day. This is a special day. Well, it'll still get out. dark no matter what. Um, but with those forty to 60,000, that's just the name on the reservation, so anywhere from 100 to 150,000 people, and that doesn't include the day trippers from Boston and New York City. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> with that being said, people from out of state are not used to driving on mud season roads. Mud season may be over by then, or not. Um, so I-89 is going to be very crowded. The state has already said they're not going to do um, oversized um, permits for the weekend. They're <clears throat> expecting people are going to start showing up on Friday. So I highly recommend anybody go do their food shopping and oh, gas purchases on Thursday or wait until Tuesday uh, because it's going to be a nightmare. Restaurants, bars, anything is going to be packed. Um, <clears throat> the cell system is probably going to, if it doesn't crump, 
it'll be extremely slow. Verizon is bringing in portable uh, towers. Really? Uh, yep. <laughs> because everybody's going to be with their cell phone. Oh, look at me! And and then when they leave when on climbed. on Monday afternoon, everybody's going to be hitting Google Maps and trying to find out how to get from where they are to get back home. So expect the cell system to be very challenged over the weekend. Um, the Loop Highway up in Colchester is actually going to be a parking lot. Uh, they'll be doing bus transportation into Burlington from there. There's a big party in Burlington down at the waterfront. There's a party here at Camp Mead. Um, the Sugarbush has a big party. I'm not sure about Stowe, but it wouldn't surprise me if they have one. So there's going to be lots of parties around and lots of people who have never been here before and, and don't know where they're going. So be patient. Be Keep your eyes out. Keep your head on a swivel uh, because it's going to be... And go grocery shopping. It's going to be tight. The other thing to watch out for is most likely the uh, emergency department up at CVMC and the urgent care centers are going to be... Um, Tasks saturated, just based on the numbers of people coming in and the whatever ails um, them going to the hospital. My guess is probably somewhere around from Monday at noon till around Monday at 4. Somebody's got to be really bad off if they're going to go to the ED because they don't want to miss, miss it. Um, so just be aware, be patient, pre-plan. If you're going someplace, go early. Um, the, we've already talked about ambulances. They're looking at, at pre-positioning ambulances on the exits, um, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, and ten. Um, realistically, we've got about ten ambulances that they can reasonably have up and running. Um, most of the ambulance services are bringing everybody in to, to fully man all their, their buses. Um, so Gosh. it's, um, this is going to be a once in a lifetime event and a lot of people are coming to event it. Is there a public service announcement like that's been going around that we could put on front porch forum? Like maybe you could do that. I can put something on front like porch forum, but there's, thing. the state hasn't put out much of anything yeah. and the hospital hasn't really put out anything. Um, the Would only that, meeting that, that's happened that I'm aware of is the one that district six had. Um, last Tuesday. I don't, Liz, I don't mind putting out something. Okay. Um, I, but I do know that Montpelier and the surrounding communities have been putting out stuff, so there might be something on the front page. I was going to close the office at noon, but I'm thinking after what you said, maybe I'll just close the office all day. I don't want to be trapped in traffic. Yeah, I mean, our roads, people could come up on any of our roads and say, oh, there's a nice field. I'm I think you should close there. for the day. If you don't have anything to do, close for the day. People aren't going to be coming to town hall. I don't know. Busy. Is what's... Does anybody know what Rummy's? Oh, what? I Schools are letting out early. Uh, it's 11:30 cool. for U32, and then Rummy is 12:30. Yeah, they're letting out. I think that the uh, there's a gathering on the tennis courts, which is supposed to be like a great place to see at the field. That should be a great spot. <laughs> but just be any open field. There's probably going to be people parking there. Yep. So, okay. And don't forget, if you haven't gotten sunglasses, get them or yeah, don't, don't look. Yeah, don't, and don't look. Don't don't point your phone, your camera, or anything that doesn't have a shield on it or doesn't have a filter on it. Up at the sun because right. there's a good chance you'll fry And if it's cloudy, you can. You can really go blind. So don't. <clears throat> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> I, they are all gone. All oh, my God. Did people just take them? <clears throat> all right. Um, okay. Is there any anything else that the fire department would like to share with us? Well, thank you for your service as usual. Tomorrow we're doing the inspection, yes. Oh, is that when it is? Yeah, for the heating That's what system. That's you put in the email. Are you still? Well, doing? Uh, it's, 20th. it's the twenty-first. 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 Thursday at nine o'clock. This is messing me up that it's a leap okay. year. Okay, so I think that yeah, and I early. think that Lowry is going or someone from the. Um, I think ours is the twentieth. Yours no, is the twentieth. That's book. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Ours is the twenty-first. Okay. Yeah, ours is, is tomorrow. At what time is yours tomorrow? Two thirty. Two thirty. Okay. Um, I'm gonna write that down. I wrote in my book today. Okay. I would have remembered yesterday. You guys are both going to be there? Yeah. Okay, good. They're doing a whole audit of the building, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, all righty. So, uh, where are we? 
There, there was no action, right, for the Middlesex Fire Department, sir? It said action possible, but okay. Highway report, 550, right on target. Amazing. Can you tell us what's happening with the highways? I can tell you. All right. I'll start off with the equipment. Everything's going good except for the freight liner. We have an electrical issue. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And I have not had a chance to look at it yet. Uh, that's with the equipment. The rest of uh, the roads, obviously, uh, Portal Road is still shut off to the buses for now. Um, hopefully, by the end of the week, we should be able to get it. It should be better. Okay. Um, and actually, it's going to be good anyway this week because it's going to start freezing up. How's Wood Road? I went up it with a dump truck today. It's fine. Okay. I mean, it's rough, but it's Is it passable? Are people able to get through yeah. now? Okay. You're, not, you're not sinking out of sight. Okay. Due to the fact that uh, you had two people out today, you didn't get over to Zidane Road, did you? I did not. Okay. There's a sinkhole over on Zidane Road. Right. And a car. And on South Bear Swamp. And a car. The sinkhole? Mm hmm I filled the one on South Bear Swamp, but I have not got over to the one on Zedon. And Steve sent out uh, his uh, was second addendum, third addendum? One of them. One of them to all the contractors. Uh, about FEMA? About FEMA, the, 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 uh, the, the yeah, C the C project. Okay, right. C projects. Okay. And we had uh, a pre bid meeting here on Friday mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock. Yep. We had about we had 20 some odd people, 20 yeah. people show up. Bidders, mm, contractors. Yeah. Sep separate vendors, or I'm guessing there were multiple some staff had two, from Some had vendor. two, but for the most part, I think we had at least what? 15. 15. Wow, that's a lot. Vendors. Yeah, okay. And so then what's the next step after you do that? So they either decide they want to put a bid, and sometimes they don't, right? Yep. How many do you expect to get? I bet, I bet most of them will, will submit something. And, and when and is I that think, I think you're going to find that some of them are going to submit for all of it. Oh, interesting. Is that something where we would consider? If they can do it. Liz, are these repairs from the flood? Is that what we're talking yes, about? this yes. is like what didn't get finished from the fall and the spring. That and some mitigation work as well. Fall and the summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when do, when are those due, those bids? Next week. Okay. And 26. then you you review them? 26. The 26. Yes. Okay. And then you make a decision when? Yeah. 26. We don't, we don't know? No, that's not how the process works. No. Process is that the sealed bids are delivered to the select board. The select board opens them at that. Okay. Point. Well, I haven't done it in a while. Then we have to go through and score them. Then we have to score them, right? Okay. Yeah. And okay. then make our recommendations. Yeah. And then you guys vote on it. And we're hoping that'll be done by when all of that. The work? No, like the decision. Probably you said March 26? Yeah, so this is like April sometime. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And, yes, Randy. Um, I'd like to know whether or not uh, Steve was able to connect with the FEMA representative to ask about the approval for I, the work that they pushed out. I did, and uh, I'm waiting for his response. I sent him all the information, and uh, he's just uh, waiting for him to send me something back. Waiting for the FEMA rep to yep. get back to you? Yeah, we had talked. We had a FEMA meeting, and we talked about it. And I said we need to have it in writing. So I, he said we'll send it. And then when I finally got to sending it, it was like a week later. And then I'm just waiting for something to come back. Randy, just to clarify, you talked about the all seasons extension or whatever. Yes. Else, you know, yes. It's just the uh, the addendum for the uh, change order for the C work of yeah. Upper Sunnybrook. You and Davy. Sarah, reiterate that part about being in the select board with the bids. So the way FEMA likes to, uh, the preferred way of doing this is that the meeting begins with the expert, whoever that is, saying how much this project cost, should cost. Then the bids are open at that time at the select board. The bids should be delivered to town to the select board. The bid, the select board opens them, reads through the bids, uh, and then they are ranked. As part of that select board meeting. As part of that select board meeting. And if you 
don't think that's right, I please encourage you to talk to your FEMA reps uh, to find out what it is. But I've been schooled on this. All right. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So these bids that are coming in, you're going to have a multitude of bids, some for the whole project, mm -hmm. some for parts of the project. Mm -hmm. How do you guys plan on dealing with the difference? You know, if you got somebody comes in for and wants to do yep. two or three roads, you got somebody who's going to come and do it all. Yeah, I know. So how do you make a decision based with all, all those different? Well, part of, the, part of the scoring is based off from uh, a multitude of factors, not all of its price. A lot right. of it has to do with uh, past experience with contractors, the proximity of the contractors for us, uh, their capability of doing the job as far as their size. Mm -hmm. uh, there's several other questions, things on there that we have to consider when we... So it's going to take a while for the board, yes. quite a process for you guys to sort through this. Yes. I don't think it can be one meeting even, can it? I got a question. Uh, yes, Richard. Yeah, I would, uh, with the bids, and when we go out there and you now, with a pre-bid, did they inspect the roads? Did they, did they come out and look at the road and say, okay, well, we need this at a certain grade, at a certain height, to be able to be at least more or better than pre-storm because we got to be some of the work that was done wasn't actually brought us back to even pre-storm conditions right you know so you kind of did we come up with a, a number of like okay you need you know three thousand yards of material that's exactly did, did you do yeah, your estimates that's as far well as that's what goes? steve did he okay. went through and he he figured you know material on the road for this long by this wide by this thick yeah this is the cubic yards that you're going to need to bid on how many culverts their size their depth all of it we actually all of us did yes we all all three of us did yep and then steve came compute uh, compile the computations in a in a base uh estimate mm -hmm. for, for the work yep randy did you want to say something yeah, I was uh, just in, in response to Matt's question, um, and I think Eric answered it, but I was just going to say that they were put out as, as so. even though they may come back and bid on multiple projects, they were issued as separate projects. Um, so we will, we'll know, like, as a grouping, how it was put up. That's how they're going to be bid on it. And, and I think Eric answered the question about size of company, their capacity with staffing and equipment and all that kind of stuff as to whether or not they get more than one project or all of them or whatever they bid for. That'll, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, because there's separate contracts for, it's like nine jobs. Okay. Can you just update us what roads those are on? Uh, yeah. East Hill. East Hill, Center, uh, Center Road, uh, Road, Zedon, Notch Road, um, Shady Rill, Wood Road, Macy Road, South Bear Swamp, uh, Upper Sunnybrook, Davie. Sunnybrook. Sunnybrook. Portal. Portal Road. <laughs> pretty much all of them. All the middle. Yeah, pretty much all the middle. There's one on McCullough. Oh, there's one culvert on McCullough. There is? Yep. Yep, and some more gravel. How many do you have? I missed a couple. <laughs> there's, there's a lot. But some, he said 13, so some of I, those had, roads, I had nine. Some of those roads are combined to one job because they're not they're overly big. Okay. 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 Yeah, I didn't get them all. Yeah, I got them. It, it yeah. would be helpful that if we have a list, that instead of just trying to catch you as, as we speak, we do if we can circulate that. that list, that would be helpful. Yeah. I got that. Yeah. Maybe the road subcommittee will have that. Yes. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, yes. I will say that. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I have a quick question. I mean, I know I'm not treasurer anymore, but when I got done, there was still, I think, three or four invoices from a vendor that was C classified, originally classified as C work, was going to be B work. It's, we were waiting for re invoicing. Has yep. anything, yep. has that been captured? Yep. It has been. And it's gotten submitted then to FEMA. It should have Because it wasn't been. on the original. Well, one of them was Carol. He called me, and I can't 
gave him the number. And he had to coordinate with Steve, and then he lost the number. Yeah, but that's coming in. But with the yeah. with the with the work from all seasons that they did on Center Road and East Hill, that will be B work. Okay, so That's somebody is submitting that then yes. because it wasn't on the original yes. sheet we had, that Sarah we had, did. We fixed we fixed the uh, the invoicing. Okay. The the uh, gravel. Miss, the gravel invoicing that was off a little bit. Yep. That's been fixed, so now we can submit that stuff. Okay. Yes, right. ready. Is this that was that question revolving around that hundred thousand dollars? It was a hundred that over a hundred thousand yeah. okay. dollars worth. That was kind of like in the air. Yep, it didn't go no, to either. We've got it. We've we've resolved the situation. Now we okay. can submit it. All right. And Sarah, did you say that we actually have money in hand from FEMA, or that it was approved? It's approved. We got we got through the central office, and now we're being stuck at the environmental and historic preservation level. They kicked back with five <laughs> other six questions, yeah. including how old gov cult, uh, Government Hill Road is. I've tried to answer those as much as I can, and I think Eric and Vic are going to have to answer the rest because it has to do with, like, I'll get it. I just didn't have time today. To yeah, okay. And then that was how much? Two hundred and two hundred fifty-two thousand. Two hundred fifty-two thousand. Okay. And as a reminder, half that would go to, if we've gotten the bond money, have we gotten that We yet? have not gotten the bond, okay. no, we haven't signed the paperwork, but that's, that's something else. Discussion. When we get okay. to that thing, I have a discussion okay. about that, so. All right. Um, Before we move yes. to the, from the road, I have one other question. Yep. Um, there was some discussion at one point about the approval of uh, essentially dredging out the bridge at the bottom of McCullough. Yes. Can we talk about where we sit with that today we finally got the permit but, but what the permit states and what we had talked about are two different things so i need him <laughs> to come back out and show him that it wasn't enough how different is what they gave Wait, us the permit for uh just the downside of the bridge and just underneath the bridge okay so nothing to do with okay nothing else Upstream. Yeah. He said we'd go 200 feet either way, and then he said, and he limited it to about 50. Yeah. Yeah. Just basically to where the pool, where the pool's around the corner where yes. the trees knocked over. Right. Yep. Does that help at all? It will help some, yeah, it but doesn't it doesn't really. You could no. really see the difference this past weekend when we got all the mm -hmm. rain, how quickly that water came up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it needs, was big. It needs to get <laughs> you see how quickly it's headed right for the. Uh, where we just paved. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah has a question. I just want to clarify. Did that permit was from A and R? Yes. And it went from 200 feet as you requested to 50 feet. Is that the issue? Uh, yeah, roughly 50 feet. Well, maybe roughly. 200 feet each way. Each right. Way. Uphill and downhill from the bridge. Right. And now I'm here in 50 feet on the downhill side. But not yeah. on the uphill side. But nothing on the uphill side. Nothing at all. Like just yeah. underneath the bridge, that's what I heard. Yep. So you wanted 200 feet on either side, but she's yeah. got 50 feet on the downhill. Yeah, he's saying roughly a, no more than 100, 100 cubic yards. So he'll come back. Okay, great. Yes, I need to get him back. Okay. Um, I will say that uh, since, so Culver Hill Road had a massive um, rebuild after the flood because we lost most of our road. Like, we lost at least half of it lengthwise. Um, and they rebuilt it from you know, almost down by the shooting range up past to the Bretts, there's no mud. And it's great. And it really makes, I mean, there's a few little potholes, right, you know, because it's been raining a lot, but there is no mud. Because it's, you know, the road was gone, and they had to rebuild it. And it just, I can't tell you, usually, like last, it was two years ago, I think it was, we were homebound. Like, we could not leave our house for about three days because of the mud. And there's just nothing like that now. So I just, I'm hopeful that, like what you're saying, Richard, that, you know, with some of these repairs, although, you know, FEMA's not here to rebuild our roads, right? That's the other issue is that, you know, it would, and, and I will say, you know, that stretch that was maybe a quarter of a mile, $250,000. So we're talking like a million dollars a mile to rebuild roads. And that's just, you know, with, with, Maybe it's less. Maybe you can do it for less, but it's like, I mean, that's, no, no. maybe it's more. <laughs> I'm just laughing because um, what we were talking about one day. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and so, you know, if we have 56 miles of dirt roads and we had to rebuild all the roads, that's $56 million. And that, you know, it's just not palatable, right? So, you know, maybe this subcommittee that we'll be bringing up right 
now, I believe it is. Um, I, I have yes. one other thing. Just at that point, that's the uphill side of McCullough, mm -hmm. where the rock wall on the apart. opposite side, on the center road side mm -hmm. of the bridge, the it's basically just degraded to the point where we've got eddies circulating around the headstone and grabbing that bank and pulling it into the bridge. That wasn't part of the emergency watershed or anything like that? Um, I or was thought, that only homeowners? I thought that there was some stuff with some town roadways, but yeah. I don't think this was this was part of that. Maybe it, maybe it was, but I just I want to make sure you guys are Very well aware. Well. You know, I, I drive through there every Watch time it every rains, day. and mm -hmm. and it constantly is just being eroded to yep. the point where eventually that pavement road. is just going to start being undermined as well. We have a serious concern. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. at the end of my driveway over the bank, you know, the, the brook overruns that whole section and starts washing out through yep. there as well through a lot lot of these rain events. Uh, yes. Never used to be that way. Yeah. yeah. I have a question that's I've never been to before. Thank you oh, good. Uh, well, for the uh, for request. I'm not sure when to ask it or how to ask it. Okay. Um, I'm not a resident, but... As you know, I drive bus for Romney. Yep. Um, my first uh, question is that turn onto Shady Row coming from Western. Yep. As you get to the top, people will just barrel right through there, try to get ahead of me. There's no yield, no stop sign. Oh, interesting. I mean, okay. it'd be nice to have a stop sign. So you're coming from Worcester and taking a right onto yeah, Shady Row. Right. That, there's, there, yeah. there's a stop sign up for the 12 side, but not to turn on Shady Row. I prefer uh, a stop sign because I was going through there one day and Someone had to. Jeez, with the bus. Go. And the other thing was, uh, what is that road um, in uh, Putnamville? Oh, Norton. Nor the Norton. Yeah. Just after that, uh, that house on the right that sits right on the corner, yep. right where you guys put in your uh, yeah, the speeding signs. Speeding yeah. signs does not work at all. Um, I've had a few red light runners because they come around that corner so fast. I don't know if uh, the previous bus driver complained. I don't know if the air. Oh, so you're on Norton trying to take a left no, or something? No, no, I'm on the main road. Okay. And I stop, I pull to the edge of the driveway, but people come around there, and they don't see me in time, and I don't know if there's some way we could trim the trees back so they make it a little right. bit better view of me, because a couple of people have run my red lights uh, last when it oh rain, my gosh! Thursday okay, yeah, I, I was like, "What red light are you talking about? You're talking about the bus red light." Bus light. Yeah, it's right on the corner, right where you had the U.S. Yeah. Bomber sign, and they come around the corner. And Friday, I had, uh, I think it was Friday or Thursday. Oh my god, that's so scary! A car stopped, but it, it saw me. It was coming a little more than 35, and I was talking to the father for a second, and he wanted to let me know something. I, I turned my head back, and the vehicle was in this lane at me, pulled beside him. He must have been going too fast. It was rainy. He couldn't stop. So I don't know if we get just some way to trim those trees back. I. The, uh, we've had is no there luck. another place for a stop? No, not not okay. for not for him. He's a he's a he's a pre -K, he's a pre K. Oh gosh, so can, this um, is so I, Yeah. Yeah. So it's right where state. Yeah. So I don't. Uh, we've had no luck. Way that shoots right off on the corner uh, to the right hand side if you're heading towards Worcester, right on the corner. Yeah. yeah that's last, last house. It's, it's right where your right where your uh, speedometer sign you put in. We the last semester I ever complained and they got no order with the state. I, if, Maybe okay. Uh, Zara has her hand up. Uh, uh, okay, Zara, yep. I'm just saying maybe a mirror placed on a tree so that people can see what was going on is cheaper than cheap trees down? I don't know. I'm yeah, not it's not really taking trees. It's just, uh, you know, cutting, like, the some branches back. Yeah. Um, and then just, those are just my two, two wondering yeah. about. And I know. wonder too about, but the te this is a state thing, like putting up a sign that says school bus stop, right? That's a state. Yeah. Well, any, state any work done on that is, is through the state. Yeah. And then okay. I don't, uh, because we've had no luck in the past. I, even with the last bus or so, I, maybe if Eric says, or the board asks, hey, can we get it cut back? Okay. And then just maybe just a stop sign on Shady Roof, if that's possible. Okay. Is that, are we allowed to, to cut those trees or no, that's a state, state. thing too? Okay. No, actually, I think we're done on the do you know who we contact in the state? I can yeah. call, call him. Yeah. Who? Mr. Gadaby. I can send him an email. I would, um, I'm, I'm slightly uh, confused about the location, but maybe afterwards. Or yeah, yeah. We can and, and, and so about, if you're coming from, if you're coming from uh, Worcester, uh, so you got that uh, 
What is I that? know where Albie Bourne's house is. Um, it's, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, you okay. have that little business there. Uh, so right, it's that last corner, just before you come into Putnamville, there's yeah. a little business there. I'm trying to think of Oh, the business. fish luring? Um, it's neat. It's on the Worcester side. Right there. Yeah, so um, it's actually right where... That's what he's talking yeah. about. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah. This is Michelle this is Norton Redmond. Road here. Yeah, it's out. Uh, Michelle Redmond. Uh, is this heading yeah. out towards there? She works for the state. She does. Yeah, she does. In what heading department? Like like this is this is Worcester. Okay, this so is Norton. transportation. So if you yes. if you're heading at yeah. yeah. this so it's right this here. This is Albie Bourne's yeah, house. So yeah. I it's do right have an email. Corner, so I can give it to you. Your sign is right here. Where you're spotted. Your spot where are you? Where are you? Your email. I'm stopping yeah, right I, at the yeah, end of here. I can send Sometimes you a yeah, would you stopping at Albie's house. Yes, I can stop okay. at Albie's house. So he's stopping at Albie's house. He's stopping at Albie's house. house. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So my, my, my concern and was just for the safety of this people. group of trees. Because they barrel right around that corner. Even though they're you coming even from this way, that nice he's stopped and over he's here. And they're not stopping. Sign. I see. Okay, yep. I got you. That is a sharp corner. I know what you're talking yeah, about. And they, yeah, and they say it's, it flashes what your speed, and it says 35 miles an hour. You put the signs in, but they ignore it. Yeah, 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 and, gotcha. Okay. And with what happened Friday, you know, they, you know. Okay, I'll say that a child nearly was hit by a car. No, I won't go that far, but that <laughs> could be. I mean, that's bad. You know, it's, it's, it's just terrible. that and just maybe just the stop I sign. Would be, just, I would be scared. And I, that was just my two requests, you know, if that's something the board would entertain. You know? Okay, thank you for bringing that up, and thank you for driving the bus. <laughs> That's a it's big job. It's going to be fun. They're getting out early, but I wonder how much travel I'll hit on the 8th. For the okay, months. right, yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. All right, so now we're a little behind schedule, folks, but, but we're considering creating a mud road subcommittee that would research the cost of road repairs and potential grant funding, paving costs, et cetera. A action possible. So this, Sarah, do you have want to give a little history about this mud committee, or you want me to? You told me. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, so basically there have been, um, and I don't, Think, is Hilton on the phone? I can't see exactly who's no. here. I don't know that Hilton is here. No. But um, Hilton, uh, dear, Dyer, I always want to call him dear, but Dyer, um, just like I want to call you Cowles, but it's Coles, right? Um, so uh, Hilton um, offered to do a, and he was in touch with Susan Clark, our town moderator, and Sandy Levine um, from our planning commission about um a uh, doing a survey, like a survey monkey kind of thing, so that we could start to get, um, you know, a Excel spreadsheet or something that lists the um, challenging spaces that that people have on the roads during flood season, um, and um, and you know, I think that. It's an interesting concept, right? Um, and I know that um, that you know could be one piece of it, but really, um, there are there are some you know potential funding out there that you know we could pursue um, that isn't uh, funding that we normally use right because we know about the fundings that we normally use right like there are there are grants everywhere for highways that you're aware of and that we utilize maybe there's some that we're we're missing um and you know i think that as a part of our um select board goals which are not on this are they not yet um that we do want to think about you know figuring out how and I, i'll recognize you in a minute there peter figuring out how to um, get back to some of that work that was done in Paul's tenure. Um, you know, really, um, does that mean that we hire a contractor to do that? And how much is that going to cost? Um, so this, you know, subcommittee could potentially be involved in, um, you know, determining, you know, what would be the cost to the town to really do serious mitigation on some of these these tough areas that we've been putting off um, and you know or do we as a town do it and we hire for the uh, maintenance you know as Richard said this isn't gonna be cheap and you know I think that it would be helpful for you know if there is people if there are people who are interested in being more involved in the roads because this isn't getting better every year this is getting worse every year and so, you know, I personally think it's not a bad idea. Peter, you had your hand raised, and I just want to welcome you to the meeting. He's muted. You're muted. 
You're muted, Peter. <laughs> I apologize. I'm not, usually not muted, as you all know. Um, I apologize for being late to the meeting. Uh, I, I've been thinking a lot about this road business, as I know we all have. I mean, my only comment is, I think we know pretty darn well where the bad spots are. The road crew knows. Most of us have been involved in town roads for years who've been dealing with the town roads, know where the bad spots are. I don't think we need help doing that. But where I think we potentially could really use help is figuring out how to pay for this. And if there are other grants out there, whatever it is, um, and or, heaven forbid, but maybe building community consensus that we're just going to, you know, increase our, our property tax bills and we're going to go after some of these bad spots, whatever it is. But any, any group of people who are interested in getting involved in these roads, I think it's a good thing and I think we can use all the help we can get. So I was, I was initially uh, kind of reluctant about this, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought it was a good idea. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Liz, yes. I, I think, I mean, Jody. I think a survey is always great. People want to put yes. their input in, but I think we need people on the ground to actually go. Like, I would like to see, like, Matt and Richard, some people who have the experience to work with Eric to go and investigate this stuff and make things happen, mm -hmm. you know? Because I think we talk a lot, but we don't act a lot. And I just think that it would be great to get some people who really have experience to figure out what needs to be done and how to get it done. Okay. I, I'd like to say something for yes, a second. Yes, So I would be more than willing to get involved with this road committee and help the town with the mud problem. I first want to say this year has probably been the worst year since I've ever been here and I've been here 50 years. Um, the freeze-thaw fact that we've had like six mud seasons started in December. These guys don't have a chance. They just don't have a chance. When, you, when the road thaws and freezes every other week, there's not a lot you can do. And when the work, and where the work needs to be done, and when the work needs to be done, needs to be done in the summertime. And I also want to say I was on the board for three years when Paul, who everyone talks highly about for lots of good reasons, I think he'll go down in history as the guy who fixed Molly Supel Hill, because I hear it all the time. And he did, at a cost. Mm -hmm. But there was, we did suffer that year in maintenance. But that's what happens when you take three or four of your road crew guys and, and you put all your efforts in one area, you're going to sacrifice somewhere else. So I could talk in, in, in deeper content about what I think, you know, how to handle this down the road if, if people would want me to get involved. But I also think there's other ways that we can make these roads better. And there's little secrets here and there. And certain roads require different treatments that we can address for a lot less money than everybody is thinking, oh, we're going to just dig it all out and replace it. And, um, some places, yes, but there's a lot of places, right. no. Oh, yeah. And I don't, sure. I, I don't even think that's a real, a real. No, and it's thing. not a real. Yeah, it's not a real. Sure. So I would just like to say I'm more than willing to help out if. if Thank you, Matt. Need, so. Zara, you had a question. I just was going to say I would be more than happy to work with Matt and Richard, and I would assume Vic would also want to be part of the committee. Um, I'm better at finding money, so I'm interested in finding grant money to help us pay the bill or creating events um, with planetary matters or whoever. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of um, out-of-state homeowners. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, out-of-state homeowners are about 9% of our um, community. So we don't have a lot of pockets to dig in there. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to be on the committee with guys who know what to do. I'll help find the money. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Zara. Yes, Richard? I, I would say the same. I, I don't know if we need to pay somebody. I don't know how much money it would cost to pay someone to do a study. Um, I, 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 like you say, I think we know some bad areas. I've got to believe that there's a, there's a lot of bad areas. We can only address so much at a certain time. 
But um, yeah, I don't think we need to just take money to have someone say, tell us what we already know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, start at it. And in the summertime, you've got to do it in the summer. You can't do anything now. You know, the mud is just piling high now. And, um, and we keep cutting it, cutting it down, cutting it down, and throw, throwing it into the ditches. We can't do much about that. Um, and then if we bring it back, we're only bringing back the muck. Right. You know, it's not, and it's going to come back next year. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we cut it down and maybe if we find the places that we can add, the, you know, decent material, um, it it go along with like your road or like you were talking about. Yes, so, sir. I'm sorry. I, I think we just on a really good yeah. We got a BCA hearing. If you guys are going to appoint a subcommittee, do you want me to put out a notice for it and then you can appoint a subcommittee? As you guys would want to know, if it's a formal select board subcommittee, you have to keep minutes, order meetings, etc. Okay. All right. So. So, but we're not doing that tonight because we have to put out a notice. Well, that's I'm just saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just move it to the next level. So. Yeah. Okay. I think that I, I so I would agree that we could move this to the next level. Um, and, but, and we need to make a motion. No. I okay. Just think it just yeah. To invite people to join a subcommittee. Okay. Join a subcommittee, and then everybody understands that that's what you got to do. Okay. So, do, do you agree with that, board members, that we should have a subcommittee who um, helps us determine some of this? And I would say too, just and Peter does, yeah. Um, I would say too that I know you're like, oh, we don't need to hire anyone, but this this type of like engineering study could be a grant through the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission through a municipal planning grant. They, they like those kinds of projects that, you know, we could spend some money doing that unless you really didn't think that was necessary. Not yeah. At all. Okay. Not at all. Can I just say one more thing? Yep. I just want to say thank you to Eric for all he does because he does the best he can with yeah. what he has to work with and just acknowledge that and just to ask him that having this committee, would this be helpful to you? Absolutely. Okay. You might even show up. <laughs> even better. Um, okay, so that's great. Sarah, we'll put out a notice, and then at our next meeting, we'll actually, like. Yeah, just if people can send letters, we'd like to be part of the subcommittee, then you can put together something. Yep, okay, so I think that, yeah, you would you'd submit a letter saying you want to be part of the subcommittee. Email, would, yeah, an email's fine. Also, can I yes, say sir. one thing? I know, I'm sure Eric wants to get out of here before the BCA hearing. Can we just discuss the uh, Portal Road, not Portal Road, uh, the, the Putnam uh, curb cut? Eric, oh, you have yeah. uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just they need to follow the uh, specs on the attachment A on the on the state spec form like we normally do. I don't see any issues with. Wait, it. is this the Diana and Luther Putnam? Yep. Yeah. Okay. On South Yes, Spot. correct. Yep. Okay. Um, an access permit for Diana and Luther Putnam. Okay. And there's nothing special about it. Okay. No. Are they here? I don't no. think they're here. Okay. All righty. Um, so. It's clearly marked. Do we want to approve that right now? Jump down and approve that? Well, I don't think it's up to you. But since I just, the last time you guys didn't approve an access permit because Eric wasn't here. Okay. So, so, go, so just wanted to just. Do, is there a motion for approving and signing an access permit for Diana and Luther Putnam on South Coast Road? I'll make that motion. Okay. Okay. Randy's just sitting there right now. Yeah, I'll check it. Randy seconds it. All those in favor of approving the access permit for Diana and Luther Putnam on South Carolina Road, okay. say aye. Okay. Aye. aye. Thank you. On to the next one. Okay. So now we are at. Um, oh God. Where? What time does the meeting start? Six fifteen. It's six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. Do you have the agenda and minutes for that yep. and that the, the instructions ready. and everything? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. So uh, let's see. The buyout for camp. Okay. Approving Mark Steinberg and Linda Sue. Yeah. Application for a buyout of their camp at three six six Vermont Route twelve. Action likely. I'll just tell you this. So this has been something that's been going back and forth for the state. This is a camp that exists in the middle of state land, basically in the put in the runoff from Wrightsville Reservoir, uh, right by Shady Rill. When you turn on to Shady Rill, yeah. Um, and the, the first mark was going to go through the state, but the state still wants the town to approve this buyout. The question is whether or not the town will have to quote unquote maintain the property after the buyout if it goes through, and that means you come by and you take photos and say, "Yep, yeah, no one's building there," which is, and it may 
the state is still looking at taking this over. But we can't, they can't get to the buyout level without the select board approving that because you're taking them off the tax rolls. Okay. It's a small camp. I don't know where it is. The, of the overflow where section. is it related to Tammy's farm? Farm. Tammy, Tammy White. Yeah. If you before when you cross over the bridge. Yeah. Before you get to Merritt Road, if you took a really sharp left right there and went down, oh. it's down in there. Yeah. Right. So before Tammy's house on the left. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's interesting. I didn't know there was anything there. Okay. And this is a FEMA. For it's the camp? same thing as like the Three Mile Bridge, uh, uh, all those other buyouts that you've done. For yeah. camp. It is well. Not a anyway. primary home. No. Nope. This so is really weird. Well, that's for you to consider if you if you want to defer on it. I mean, you, you, uh, do, you can defer on it. I, I just didn't realize that FEMA did buyouts for camps, <laughs> but maybe they do. I mean, I, I guess I don't have a problem with it. Well, it I mean, just becomes our property. I don't know. We, that's that's the issue. Okay, why don't we put this, can we put this, or, or not? I don't know, but I don't know what I'm going to learn between now and then. I mean, you, you, sure, just put it off. Yeah, let's just put it off for now. Okay, great. Um, and I'd like to learn a little bit more about that, but okay. I don't know if you can provide any more information. Um, is everyone okay with that? I, uh, yeah, I'd like to know more. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we have, do you think um, we can get through the next agenda item? Um, which thing. is the bond. I, I think there's some discussion there. A little bit of discussion. I mean, not a lot, but. Okay. Um, um, sounded like more than three minutes. Well, it, this is, I don't know how closely everybody read the, um, the agreement that you're signing the note, mm -hmm. um, but it appears from reading this that we don't actually pay the money it sounds like we report the, the money that we receive, but we don't have to physically pay it until March 1st of 2026. We make interest payments prior to that, but I just wanted to make sure somebody else was reading this the same way that I was reading this because that's um, he told me. Yeah, I didn't. He told me. He told me. Uh, princi the first year was interest, I think, and then principal. Well, because it's, he did so they have provided a schedule of payments okay. with this in this, and that's why I'm saying that. And but then, if you read Exhibit C, it talks about doing a report that we will have the money to pay back. Um, based on making the interest payments and the principal payment not until March 1st of 2026. So it's not like if we get this $250,000 that we send them 125 the way I'm reading this paperwork. Okay, so we need clarity. Well, I, I think we definitely want to do the loan and sign it, but yeah, I think there's more to how the repayment, the repayment okay. portion of this is. Yes. I, I just think everybody needs to really look at that. Okay, um, I would agree with that. So I would um, just let you. I'm just going to remind you that the closing it. for this loan is on May on March on March 28th. Okay, right. so we should approve this tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's we can the still day. approve yes. it. It's just how we how we interpret the payment. Money. That's what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. That. We need a motion to approve the res resolution. If you just read it off the agenda list. Okay. So that's what needs to be approved. Okay. That's what's dated. Yeah. So I, is I there don't think there's any question from anybody that we need to move forward with this. I'm looking I'm for those on Zoom. That we move forward with the bond. Okay, so approving a Vermont bond bank resolution to refund outstanding debt incurred from the July 2023 flood by taking out a loan for 938000 from the Vermont Bond Bank at 1.30% interest. And that motion has been made by Zara. Is there a second? I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay, Peter will second it. All right. All those in favor of approving the Vermont Bond Bank resolution, say aye. 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 The aye. ayes have it. Okay, so we are just around 6.30, which is um, our... Uh, BCA meeting, and then we're going to have to hold off on the other business until we have gotten through the BCA meeting, and then we will return. So we are temporarily adjourning the meeting.
Right. And readjourning after, or we're recessing. Right. We're taking a little recess, folks. We're taking a little recess. Please sign those bond documents, because those need to oh, be signed. Okay. Please. I know, but i got to get into the lawyer this week. Now we're going to move back to, we're going to reconvene um, our select board meeting um, for Tuesday, March 29th, to cover other business. So we did approve already while, um, while Eric was here, the signing of the access permit. Um, so, Lowry Sharp, are you still here? You are, yep. So, we're responding to a survey of the agents. This is just kind of quick. It's a very short survey. Um, so, what's happening is the state of Vermont is applying for a $200 million grant from the EPA that is called the Climate Produce Pollution Reduction Act. And it is um, apparently the, they're, you know, going to have some money for municipality, you know, to hand out to municipalities. Um, I thought I had a printout of it, of the question. Um, but, um, so, so they're, they want us to prioritize and basically, um, you know, one sentence, like, what is your top priority for how you would use this money? And it's not like, oh, we want to fix our roads, because that's not that kind of money, I don't believe. It's not like they're going to hand us... Fifty million dollars of this two hundred million dollar grant, right? I think this is like small things, like oh, I'd like to have a solar panels, um, that kind of thing. Um, Larry, do you happen to have that survey and what the question is? I'm afraid I don't. Okay, let me see if I can bring it up um, on my phone. I thought I printed it out, but I don't seem to have it. Um, so basically what we're thinking about is, um, and they give you some suggestions, um, I mean, I guess what we could say is if we don't want to make a decision tonight, maybe we could allow the energy committee to set a priority of what they think might be good for, for the town. Um, let's see, Sam Lash, right? I think that's a, that's a wise way to go since we haven't discussed it as a committee. Um, yeah, I'll just quickly read that I have it right up here. Municipalities, the municipality's highest priority project relating to greenhouse gas emissions could be weatherizing municipal buildings. Oh, it could be the town garage. The town garage. A community solar project, a new park and ride, EV charger installation, equipment upgrades, etc. And then a rough budget estimate will be used for general grant calculations and does not have to be specific. And then it says, like, these are potential co-benefits. Resiliency, adaptation, so making infrastructure, community more prepared for and resilient to climate change. Public health, protecting residents from health dangers of climate change or pollution. Economic, improving financial standing of the municipality or its residents equity, creating more equitable disbursement of resources or opportunities, and other. So it's a very short survey. Um, so I guess what we could say is can we, uh, would we as a board be okay with the Energy Committee completing this survey after they meet and talk about it? Unless we have some burning desire to say, no, we want to prioritize. I mean, it, this doesn't mean that we have to use the money for this, but I think they're, they're curious as to what we would use the money for. Thoughts? I don't have any issues with them filling out a survey. I think that we have plenty of need here. You know, stuff like the town garage, stuff that we always know that we have uh, investment to, to make, and we always struggle to find money to make it happen. Um, as long as those things are put on those lists, you know, that's that's my interest. Well, okay. Excuse me. Yes. Dick. As long as we put the town garage on them. I'm for it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that, Larry? As long as the town garage is on it. Um, okay, so do we even need a motion for this survey? I don't think so. All right, so Larry, why don't you, and I think it's due on the 21st. It's due in a few days. So, you know, maybe just send a quick email to the people on the Energy Committee and get some feedback from them. That would be great. All right. And then Thanks. And then complete the survey. Okay, perfect. Thanks. That's good. Thank um, you. We've done the order. So then we have two... Um, Correspondence letters from Jeremy Goff and Evelyn Prim, Action Possible. So everyone has a copy of, I believe, both letters. Let's go over the first one first from um, 
Jeremy from Jeremy Goff. Um, did everyone get a chance to read this? This was sent just randomly to Susan Clark, um, and she sent it to Peter and me. Did you have you read also, this? It was also stuffed in the stuffed door, in, town in hall the door. On town meeting day. Oh, okay. So it was stuffed in the door, and so um, it, it's essentially. Um, Someone is purporting to have had a um, interaction with Mr. Dwyer, Vic here. Um, this was looks like way back in July with the flood, um, and I guess you know I just uh, would like to maybe hear your side of the story, Vic, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to everybody? Just to hear, like, what happened, I guess, you know. Peter has his hand. Oh, yes, Peter. Uh, you're, you're muted, Peter. <laughs> um, so, first of all, I'd like to say this gentleman called me uh, sometime within a few days of this incident. And all I said to him was, you know, you need, you need to submit, if you want to pursue this, you need to submit a letter of, of complaint to the town. He never recontacted me and never submitted anything until, uh, until we received this. Um, I also believe, and uh, I need your help on this, Sarah, that this is a uh, complaint against a town official so does that constitute something that we can deal with in executive session, or do we need to deal with it in, open, in an open meeting? I need to be more prepared for these parliamentarians. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, well, what, what, I, what, I would suggest, what I would suggest, guys, I'm sorry. What, what I would suggest is that we respond to Mr. Goff and say, uh, we are going to investigate your allegations, and we will get back to you. And then... At some time in the future, maybe the next select board meeting, I believe, I mean, from what I know about the open meeting law, we can do it in executive session. I hope we can, because this is not something that I would like to appear in the town minutes. I don't think it's appropriate. So my recommendation would be uh, we respond to this letter to say we're investigating it and we will get back to him in the future. Okay, I would, I would venture to guess it couldn't be because he's an elected official, but maybe I'm wrong that this could not be an executive session. But I'd have to look I, back on executive session. I, I can't see where He's not, he's not an employee, He's not an employee. It's an elected, like you said, he's an elected official. I can ask Halpert, I can ask the town attorney if you want me to do that. I mean, if we have to, if we have to do it in open session, we have to do it in open session. But I would prefer to do it in executive session if we can legally do it at one point. I guess. I had a conversation with this gentleman back in July. Okay. All right. So I'll send an email to him saying that we will do an investigation. Yes, Randy. Can I? I mean, I guess I have some questions about whether or not this is an accusation against a town official or not. Just because Vic is a town official does not mean a personal interaction with the resident or contractor or whoever unless he's on official business or identifies himself as acting on the behalf of the town. Two totally different things. Here we didn't. I, what, I was told, what I was told, Randy, was that he that identified himself as the road commission. I, this this written communication. I mean, you're, you're right. This written this communication may be, does not indicate this may be that. This an allegation against the town, not an allegation against Victor. But the bottom line is, he's asking us to take action against Victor, which probably we can't take anyone. Yeah, I get that. He's an elected official. He's an appointed road commissioner, but he's an elected select board member. Yeah, I mean, reading through this, I, I fail to see where he's identified that Victor was either acting in or identified himself as conducting business as the town road commissioner. So I guess that would be my and question as know, we look into I'm this. I'm telling you is that that's what he took to me at the time. But. Okay. Well, all righty. I guess this is also just a reminder that we are the face of the public. Absolutely. And we should be polite and courteous, even when we don't want to be. 
um, because we're going to see well, people in the grocery store. We're going to see them on the roads. We're going to see them everywhere. I, yes, Matthew, or Matt, so I'm sorry. The biggest reason I came here tonight was I knew that this was potentially coming up in I'm also a shared landowner with Mr. Dwyer on this particular piece of property for which this gentleman showed up at our property. I can assure you that my father was acting on behalf of the owner, our property, and was caught by surprise that this was happening. Was never notified mm -hmm. by the town or anyone that this was going on, which was inappropriate. What's this? Dumping of the... Dumping the material. Oh, dumping the material. Okay on our property. So that being said, I, I'm just here to verify the fact that he's, he was acting, whatever happened, was acting on his own homeowner. personal mm -hmm. behalf, had nothing to do with the town of Middlesex. It's, it's cut and dry. Whatever did happen, that's, that's the way that went down. It would be no different than if you brought a load of gravel and dumped it in front of your garage door. You probably would like it. No, I wouldn't. Um, okay, so I think, um, so just so you guys know, when people uh, submit information to the select board, it just gets put on the agenda yeah. as correspondence. Well, as yeah, sure. yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, there were a lot of stuff going on. Everybody was didn't have a lot of sleep back then in July, and I'm sure there was a lot of confusion at that time from even truckers and things like that. So um, I'll respond to his, his email. And you're just going to say that we're going to look into yeah, it? Yeah, that, that we'll, we will, um, you know, if, if Sarah finds out that we can just have a conversation, we'll just have a quick conversation at our next meeting in public and, um, and have an opportunity for you to describe what happened and... Um, if he says we can go into executive session, we'll do that. If it not, we'll just do it in public. Okay. Um, does is that does that sound right to everybody? Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess okay. that I've stated my question. Yeah. And, you know, the, I mean, in I, here it says that you know uh, Vic did not introduce himself, so um, you know at that point. You're sitting on your own property, and I, I just. Yeah. I mean, maybe we don't. Maybe we don't even have to keep doing this. Maybe we just do it right now. I don't know why we need to even go like think about this as, as an executive session. I would just as soon get this over with, have Vic be able to explain, and then I can respond to this man. Does is that does that work for folks? Okay. Yes. Peter, are you okay with that? Yep. Okay, Vic. Why don't you go ahead and explain if you remember what happened back in July? Um. Well, have, we have this little piece of land, well, it's part of 90 acres, but we have a little piece of land that's flat down there, and Matt uh, dumps uh, material there from, from some of the projects he does and piles it up, and then he, uh, he does screen it and uh, take part of the soil out for, like, topsoil and then stone and... Uh, I think the guy even mentions this in here, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it was from, the material was uh, mostly, except for a couple of loads that they had to dump there, the town. Um, but anyways, uh, so I come home, I'm coming up the road, and uh, there is a pile of stuff dumped on uh, Matt, on Matt's pile. I said, what? And, and uh, so I stop, and then this truck comes along, we're blowing Cody. And so he's going to back up there. So I go over there and I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm dumping it here. They told me to dump it. I said, who told you to dump it here? And they told me that. I said, hey, no, no, I don't want it here. They don't. I haven't talked to anybody. I don't know anybody like that. I don't want the material here. And he got real nasty with me and said, well, he was going to do it anyway. So he just started backing up. And I said, no that you, you can't do that and so and so told me and I said well call so and so and tell them they don't they got the wrong spot I haven't given anybody permission so uh, nor do I want to and so uh, he kept after it he kept backing up and he was going to dump it and he got real nasty and he got in the, I said look I'm just calling the state police so I went and and uh, 
started to call the state police, but then I decided, because uh, he said, I said, well, who are you working for? And he said, Hutchins. So I called Hutchins, the, the contractor that was working up there, Jeff Hutchins in Richmond. And I said, hey, look, what are you guys doing? You know, you got a truck, you're dumping your stuff here. I don't want that stuff here. And uh, so the next thing I know, uh, uh, there's a guy shows up and there's a guy on the phone. A guy calls me, his mic guy. He said, Steve Martin told us we could dump it there. Well, Steve didn't tell him that. And I said, no, he didn't. And uh, so he says, uh, well, we'll pay you anything. We'll get, we'll gravel you, whatever you want. I said, I don't want anything. I don't want anything. I just don't want to dump the stuff here. Because he said, well, I got 25 loads coming. I said, I certainly don't want 25 loads coming. Yeah. For road repair? 25 loads of stone to put on McCullough Hill to fill the holes that were... During the flood time. During the flood during time. The flood time. Yes. Okay, Sarah, do you have a question? <laughs> they wanted to take valuable stone and put it on the dump pile, or is this like junk? They're using that. Garbage. They're using that as a stockpile. They just dumped it on him. They got up on his pile. Okay, okay. Yeah. But, but they were going to... It's like you're getting rid of all that valuable stone. Where, would, where were they supposed to put it? Someone must have told them to come and put something down somewhere. Mike from Hutchins told them to. But he was the superintendent for Hutchins. He was the guy that was over on it. your road. Okay, right, yep. And probably John Christian, too. Okay, interesting. All right, Zara has a question. Go ahead, Zara. Just curious at, at what point you. I'm just curious at what point that you um, said I'm the road commissioner and this is not. What you're supposed to be doing? I don't think I ever said that. It's he might the, know you. That the you written, agree. the written correspondence, the yeah. written correspondence in in paragraph three says uh, at the very end, Vic did not introduce himself, nor did he ask what I was doing. Okay. So, alrighty. And then he says in in your letter, which is absolutely wrong, because. Uh, he, it says in here that he that, that the contractor coordinated it with the town crew and uh, and the uh, town foreman and and they had nothing to do with it. So it, they they just the contractor this Mike I don't know what his last name was he was a foreman or superintendent for Hutchins and uh, told him just to dump it there. Okay, so and he was so doing the what real he was issue, told. The real issue is not so much Mr. Goff. The real issue, which we should respond to, and we should and we should uh, uh, address it, was to Hutchins because they had no right to do that, mm -hmm. and uh, and then that turned into it turned into a real brouhaha after that, but uh, because they did did use it. So did Blow and, was Blow and Cody working for Hutchins? Is Blow that? and Cody was in, working for Hutchins, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And probably why you uh, Susan Clark, and this is just an assumption on my part, just, why would you send it to Susan Clark? Susan was on the radio on WDEV. He lives in Waterbury, I believe, or did live in Waterbury. And she was talking about the, the the town meeting and stuff, and how in, and then she gave the S Clark uh, Mount, that's how, at Mountain. That's how he. That's how oh, he oh now I have a place to vent. All right. So, so yes, yeah, so he sent it to Susan, who then sent it to us, and um, and okay. So I will just email him back. Um, I I guess you know I would just reiterate for all of us again that. Um, keep our swear words to a minimum, right, when we're talking in the public, because sometimes sometimes it just, you know, people understand that, you know, yes, we're all just regular I, people, but we also have a professional um, I don't agree with that at all. You I don't think agree? that No. I, you, think you the I think the select board should contact our lawyer okay. and address it legally. With Hutchins. With Hutchins and him, I mean, this is slander. I didn't say this thing. Have you ever heard me talk um, using the F word? I don't that know. That much? If I have. Maybe yeah. I don't know. 
Um, so if it, so if. <laughs> well, ask my kid. Ask my kid. I, I don't know. Zara, yes. That's the thing I have. <laughs> what I'm saying though is, if we can go the non-lawyer bank for a lawyer route yeah. first, yeah. that would be great. Well, when are we going to rep When are we going to stand up for the people on our select board? When are we going to stand up? I mean, if this happened to Sarah or our listeners, mm. something like that, when are we going to stand up? What, are we going to let people do this kind of stuff and just come out with these? This is a total false allegation. So, Vic, this is what I would like then, um, is, you know, I mean, we could reach out to Hutchins and say that we received a complaint from one of his employees and that we have a different version of what happened. Um, and I have to be honest that um, I didn't take thorough notes on what happened because it sounds like there's some other stuff that happened after that I don't, I know nothing about, that this was not just a one and done, that this continued on in some conversations with Hutchins and all that. Is that yeah. what you said? Yeah. So I don't well, not have... so much about this. Not so much about this guy. Because I think this guy was laid off immediately. He was a hired trucker. He did okay. not get paid by Hutchins. Okay. He was a hired trucker but from But Hutchins Board. is the person who seemed to be the one to tell all these truckers to dump Tell, stuff right, there. Right. Or Mike. Mike. Mike, yeah. From Hutchins? Yeah. Because <laughs> who's Jeff? <laughs> who's what? Who's Jeff, Jeff Hutchins is the guy that owns it. Okay, but Mike works for right. um, work, Mike works for yeah, so, and, I, and I um, can't I can't think of the guy that's the project manager. Um, yeah. Anyways. So I don't feel like I have enough information to go to the Hutchins company and say that that um, because I don't know this, I don't know this whole story beyond what you just said, mm -hmm. and um, I mean I could just say a very short sentence that we did not get permission for the stuff to be dumped here, and we don't appreciate employees complaining about something that was not that was not authorized, and complaining about you and your alleged. Cursing. Yes. You. Oh. Shelly, so sorry. Bottom line, anybody be upset if someone's dumping something on their property right. without their permission. Mm -hmm. You know, even if he swore. <laughs> and then <laughs> argue with you when you tell him not to do it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's possible for the board to just say, you investigated, you heard the complaint, you stand by Vic or something, and you know, yeah, just maybe. leave it like that. I, I, have a, I just I yeah. think you can skirt the whole thing is just say at the point when Vic had the confrontation he was acting as a landowner not a representative yeah. from right. the town right. Right. done deal good done luck deal. yeah because so he wasn't acting as a road commissioner and yeah. it clearly right. says okay. 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 Like, he's good with that he's good with that I can write the email and send it to you and you can sign it and approve just say I can send him a copy of the minutes so that they know that it was taken up at the meeting which is what he asked and that the board and the board reached a decision sure. that that this was done on Vic's own land in his own time and was not acting as a road commissioner or as a select. And then no one get yep that sounds done good. done yeah, that's and done. Good. All right. Done. Done. And we won't bother with Hutchins. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Does that sound good, Vic? What? It'll be reflected in the Vic minutes as well. Can hire his own lawyer. What's that? <laughs> can hire your own lawyer. Can hire his own lawyer. Exactly. <laughs> okay. What? Well, yeah. Um. All right, so our next order of business is the letter from um, Evelyn French Prim uh, regarding conflict of interest recusal. Did everyone get a chance to read this letter? And I think you're here, aren't you, Evelyn? Yeah, so we have Evelyn and Zach here. Um, Liz, I just want you to know yep. that I did give copies of this to the Budget Committee, and I did give copies of that letter to the listers, and just to remind you that those are equally and separately elected entities, the listers of the Budget Committee. Yeah, but can I say yes. Something? But but um, uh, Steve Dennis is not on the budget committee. Is that correct? Samantha is. Samantha is on the budget no, committee. No, but Steve. But it mentions no, in the letter. Steve, Stephen and yeah, that's Stephen's a mistake. on the select board. He's not. Yeah. So there's no issue. Well, no, there. but Samantha is. Samantha is on the budget committee, and she's and a, she's a listener. And she's a lister. But it's not like she's on a select board and gonna gonna uh, 
uh, affect anything? Well, I think she's, I think what Evelyn is saying is that, you know, perhaps if the listeners were going around town and going into people's homes to do, well, we don't do the reassessment, but. Well, yeah, go ahead. Listeners go around town if you have an open permit or something. Yeah. Or, right. you know, working with Kevin Thompson, but like the townwide reappraisal that's coming up in a couple of years. That's being done by a third party. Yeah, that's being done by a third party. Yep. The listers are okay. totally out of that. Well, well, is there an issue? I don't know if Evelyn's here. Now. Is there an issue with the, with with? It's with Samantha, right, on the letter. Yeah. Okay. It's not with Shelley. But no, I, just in, in 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 theory, we we don't even do the townwide. Yeah, you, yeah, we don't do appraisals. Yeah, yeah. Right. I get that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Randy. I, I just want to say. I mean, it's. We can beat this up just like we beat every yeah. other communication up around this issue. Um, I think the ask is pretty simple of Evelyn in this letter to just say, you know, because of his history and the other issues, let's just avoid any kind of potential conflict of interest. That's all they're asking for. So if and there was, if there was yeah. a lister yeah. interaction, you know, Annette, you know, she, she's a, a third party that's truly you know, outside of everything, she should be the one to handle it. I think it's common sense. Um, same thing with, you know, any, any other interaction and, and nobody's on the board. So I think we just take it at that and recognize the letter was sent and yep, leave I it agree. at that. Are you okay with that? I am. Okay. Evelyn no, I and Zach, are you guys okay with that? That sounds great. Thank no, you. Okay, yes. okay. okay. All righty. Any other matters that come before the board? I know, I'm sorry. I'll just quickly say that we did a meeting with BIA and all the next steps on that for the town hall. And um, so there's a couple of um, sort of to-do things that Sandy and I are, are um, working on and um, that's going along since that 65,000 was passed. So. How much do you have left? Oh, this is five thousand. <laughs> five. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, and the other good news is, <laughs> I think Dorinda, that all of the um, that that I finally done all the correct submission of the oh, municipal planning grant, Good. and um, they had some error on their end because I loaded everything up. She's like, you haven't still done this? I'm like, I sent it all. She's like, oh, whoops, here, I found it. So that's all set, and I think that I pressed the button for final, like this is the final thing, so we'll be getting the check for 15000 That awesome. can help us. Awesome. Yes, Peter. Did everybody signed things that there was no, I haven't signed anything, so, yep. Yes, Peter. Just a quick thing. Yep. I want to be sure we don't forget everybody's favorite subject for our next meeting, which is goals and objectives, unless yes. you did it tonight before I was there. No, we didn't forget it. And Peter, you were not here for us to give you a round of applause as your term as uh, chairman for all these years. So let's give him another round of applause. Thank you. I got one more Thank thing. You all I Peter, before you leave, is there any update on those three invoices for Welch Park? <laughs> oh, God. Interesting, interesting just, to, just to show that some subjects never change. I've been chasing Carl Balin electronically around Florida. He has not heard anything from the Welch Park attorney yet. So. I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can hold off any further. I think probably we're gonna have to pay those invoices and then get the cancellation credit back, which drives me crazy because uh, well, I was trying so hard to make that not happen. But. That's only the insurance portion. There's the permit, and there's uh, I don't remember now what the third one was. Well, I think though, aren't we aren't we not responsible for the permit anymore? I think that should go to. Uh, let me ask. Let me ask Carl a question. He's familiar with that. I think that bill should go to uh, uh, the developer, Benderson. Okay. Well, let Cheryl know because we. I mean, I think we've deferred so, this for so about one, six one weeks. One is the insurance. The other is the is the water permit. The, What's the third one? There was. Th uh, there's three of them. I don't remember what the third one was now, but it was. Um, it was the renewal of something, I oh, believe. This is the FEMA. One. Okay, well, let me get it. Let me get it. This is the FEMA. Okay. Um, yes, we, we tabled that. Yeah, okay. So that's Are we done? Meeting.
Are yeah. we done? Yeah, you guys adjourned. Uh, is it a wrap? It's a wrap. The meeting is adjourned at far too late. Kind of eight. 7.52. Great. Okay.